Hi friends, it is story time. Today we're going to read a story about a little boy named Ron. He loved to read, loved to learn, and wanted to know everything about flying. In this story, Ron has a big mission to do what is right. Let's find out what his mission is. As always, before we get started, let's talk about the parts of the book. Ron's big mission is the title of the book, and the title of the book tells us the name of the book. The title is always located on the front cover of the book, and then we have the back cover of the book, and the spine, and the spine holds the pages together. Look at there, they're not falling out. Let's get into it. You're up early this morning, Ron. What's the rush? Asked Mrs. McNair. Come and have your breakfast. I made some oatmeal. I have to go, Mama, said Ron, tying his sneakers. I have something to do this morning. You always have something to do, said his mother with a smile. Just be home by lunchtime, okay? Ron was nine years old. That morning, he left his house with a plan. He'd been thinking about it for a long time. It was a beautiful South Carolina summer day, and Ron looked up at the blue, blue sky. Someday, he thought, he would be up there, flying a plane. He wanted to be a pilot when he grew up. But today, Ron had something else on his mind, something very important. Ron walked down the street as fast as he could. He didn't want to be late. Hi, Ron, the grocer called from the front of his store. There you are, just in time for a donut. Morning, Mr. Douglas, said Ron. Thank you, but there's someplace I got to be. And Ron kept on walking. Down by the schoolyard, Ron saw his friend Carl shooting baskets. All right, you made it, called Carl. Hi, Carl, said Ron. I wish I could stay, but I've got something important to do. More important than basketball on summer vacation, said Carl. Are you kidding? Ron laughed. He loved to play basketball, but not today. Today was too important. Ron kept on walking. When Ron got to the Lake City Public Library, he stopped. This was it. He was hot from walking so fast, and he was nervous too. He took a deep breath, lifted his head high, and went inside. Mrs. Scott was busy getting ready for all the people who would be using the library today. As the head librarian, she had to make sure that everything was neat and orderly. Mrs. Scott looked up to welcome her first visitor of the day. She smiled as Ron walked in. He was her best customer. Ron gave a little wave to Mrs. Scott and went right to the shelves. It took Ron a while to find some books. He always looked for books that showed children who looked like him, but that was hard. There were not many books about black kids on the shelves. At last, Ron found some books on airplanes. He took the books and started to walk to the front desk. Ron felt nervous and his hands felt a little sweaty, but he knew what he wanted to do. Mrs. Fielding, a white lady who was often in the library, stopped him. You can give me the books and I'll check them out for you, Ron, she said gently. Gently. No thanks, Mrs. Fielding, Ron said. I'm going to do it all by myself. But Ron, she started to say. Ron was already on his way to the front desk. He put the books on the counter. 
I'd like to check these out, please, said Ron. The desk clerk didn't look at him. Didn't she hear me? Ron wondered. Ron knew what he had to do. He jumped up on the counter. He wanted the desk clerk to know he was serious. I'd like to check out these books, he said quietly. At first, the desk clerk and Mrs. Scott just looked at each other. You know you can't check out books, Ron, said Mrs. Scott. You can read them here. That's the rule. Only white people can check out books from the library. Ron looked at Mrs. Scott and the desk clerk politely, but he would not budge. I always read them here. Today, I want to check them out, said Ron. Mrs. Scott and the desk clerk did not know what to do. Ron wouldn't get off the counter. People were staring. Finally, the desk clerk called the Lake City Police. The policeman came right over. Let someone check out the books for you, son, said one of the policemen. You know the rules. But Ron just shook his head. He would not budge. Now Mrs. Scott called Ron's mother. Mrs. Mrs. McNair came to the library very quickly. I know how you feel, baby, she said, but you have to follow the rules. I can't, Mama, Ron told her. It's wrong. The rules are not fair. Why can't I check out books like everyone else? No one said anything, not the desk clerk, not Mrs. Scott, not the policeman, not even Ron's mother. Mrs. Scott looked at Ron. She thought about all the times that Ron had come into the library and all the times he sat at tables for hours looking over so many books. He was her best customer and she knew what she had to do. Mrs. Scott walked back into her office and started writing. Ron wondered what she was doing. Mrs. Scott returned and handed Ron a library card. His library card. Ron looked at Mrs. Scott and smiled. As he jumped to the floor, he thought, he saw her smile too. I'd like to check out these books, please, he said, handing the card to the desk clerk. The desk clerk took his library card and stamped the cards in the back of the book. Books. These are due back in two weeks, she said. Ron smiled. Thank you, he said. He tucked the books under his arm and took his mother's hand. Together they walked home. Ron couldn't wait to get to his room. And open to page one. Here is a picture of the little boy that the book is about, all grown up. He grew up to be an astronaut, so he did get to fly, but he flew in a space shuttle. Ron was brave and kind and stood up for what was right. 
He is a history maker because he changed the library rules in his community. When Ron became a grown up, he made history again. He took his love for learning and flying and became an astronaut and flew a rocket ship into space. <laughs>